There are $9.7 trillion in negative yielding bonds, which, you know, is just ridiculous, where the uh, 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 lender is paying uh, the borrower to hold his money. And that's up 50% uh, since September. Well, obviously, if you own negative yielding bonds, you're, you know, in no man's land. And the other big issue I see uh, uh, in terms of bond hell is the uh, European uh, situation where with Brexit and what the press hasn't focused in on much, but with Brexit, the uh, Britain's not going to recognize EU law. EU says they're not going to recognize British law. There are hundreds of billions of dollars of uh, uh, debt in Europe that are uh, under governed under British law that are going to end up in no man's land or probably revert to the country of origin which is going to cause a major problem for uh, the owners of that debt. Have, um, I don't know, have the markets not kind of considered that? Are they not trading at levels reflecting that right now? No, that's correct, Becky. I don't think many people understand. It's complicated. I don't think many people understand the risk in the cocoa bonds and the securitizations and so forth. And also, I have to say that if there is some kind of hard Brexit, the uh, banks, as far as I'm concerned, in uh, Europe and in Britain, both are going to be imperiled. We have no idea what kind of interbank uh, obligations that uh, they have. And uh, I think this is going to be uh, beyond mess into a possible catastrophe. So I've been telling uh, out of the box my commentary people to stay out of uh, putting money in Europe at the present time. You know, if it's that big of a deal, I can't help but think that it would wash up on our shores, too. Do you think that our stock market is kind of whistling past the graveyard when it's continuing to climb again, even after the gains that we saw all through the last quarter? Well, I was listening to you earlier this morning, and you were talking about uh, the uh, inclinations of the uh, universe. I think the biggest <laughs> threat right now to the uh, bond markets and to the equity market as well is what's going on in Europe, and I just don't think people have been appropriately focused on this issue. So you do think that it washes up here and that we have gotten a little bit irrationally exuberant? Is that what you're saying? Well, I think that most people don't understand how bad the banking crisis could be in Europe with a hard Brexit. And the other issue I want to bring up, Becky, is even as important, and nobody's really focusing, which is the May 23rd elections the nationalists in Poland and Czech Republic and Italy and Hungary are, looks like, according to some recent polls, going to have more than a third of the uh, votes in the uh, European Parliament. And this is going to break the cycle of France and Germany running the European Union. It's, it's going to either damage it or break it. And I'm also very cautious about that, which is why I've said to uh, the large money managers I do business with, keep your money to the extent that you can in the United States, it's much safer.